It's Maria Recruit here, and I have a question for you. Have you always wanted to own a short-term rental in the United States? I know many, it's a, it's a Canadian's dream, right? Uh, that you have a home in the, in the United States that you can go to in the wintertime and come up to Canada in the summertime when it gets a little bit too hot in, uh, let's say, Florida, right? Especially Orlando, Florida, which is so much fun. I've been there a couple of times and I just loved, especially going to Disneyland. So I have someone here, his name is Mark Younger. And Mark Younger is a husband, dad to 10-year-old twins, realtor and owner of Home Theme Orlando, and new owner of Storybook Vacation Homes. And he's going to explain to us how we can all get involved with short-term rentals. So you may decide that you want to do it yourself, or you may want to have Mark do the management for you. So he's going to kind of explain to you as a Canadian what you need to know about the laws of starting a short-term rental. So welcome aboard here, Mark. He's coming up on top. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you for coming on my show. You're welcome. Thank you very much for having me. I, I know that you reached out to me because you're on my Facebook pages. And I thought, gee, you know what? When we started talking to each other a couple of weeks ago, I thought, he's the guy I have to have on my show to explain to Canadians, uh, like before they come to you as a property manager, what they should know if they wanted to do it themselves. Just how difficult it may be, because a lot of people don't realize how difficult it is to manage a short term rental property. So, can you explain to us as a Canadian, because I know you're from originally from Calgary and move to Edmonton. I'm sorry, move to Montreal. And I myself am a Westerner from Winnipeg. So I do understand, you know, Westerners are a lot different than the Easterners are. So can you explain to all of us, just get into it a little bit and I'll be asking you the questions I know as myself as Kenny would be asking. So what do we need to know as Canadians about the laws in Florida? So essentially six years ago, as I was mentioning to you, I I got sick of the cold and sick of the winters and I decided that's it. Um, we came on vacation down here for a month to Davenport, which is just south of Orlando near Disney World. And we did the typical tourist vacation and uh, just loved it. We were, you know, just imagine December and January and instead of uh, getting the minus 20, minus 30, you're going and playing outside and going in the pool and uh, going to the water park and going to Disney World. So sure. it was a real revelation for us. So we decided, okay, we got to figure out how do we do this permanently? So we spoke to an attorney mm -hmm. and uh, decided that the E2 investor visa uh, originally would be the best for us. So we invested in some real estate properties down here in Florida. Um, so I own, I purchased a six bedroom home and I, you know, was talking to other people that were in Facebook groups. And I realized that down here, people are looking for experiences. So, you know, they stay that they're willing to pay, you know, four or $500 to stay in a Disney hotel room. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're only willing to pay $100 to stay at the Motel 6, right? Yeah. So yes. they want that experience with the characters and the, 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 the painted walls with the murals and the the slides and you know all kinds of fun stuff so it, what's better than staying in a you know 150 square foot hotel room is staying in a whole house so mm -hmm. a lot of people that come here uh large families uh african-american families latino families especially tend to travel in groups of 10 12 14 um that we see out here and they're looking for six seven eight bedroom homes so there's a great market for providing that six, seven, eight bedroom home in exchange for, you know, $500 a night. Mm -hmm. So um, $500 a night times 300 nights a year is $150,000 of revenue. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you theme it, uh, they will come uh, a little bit like the old baseball movie. So yeah. <laughs> um, I themed my home and we're having an amazing amount of success with it. And that's when I, so I shortly afterwards decided to open up my own theming studio, Home Theme Orlando, and we theme homes um, to provide those experiences for guests. Um, so investors come, they buy a home from me as a realtor, and then they theme it. And the theming is what really, you know, brings it from being able to charge 100, 150 bucks a night to mm -hmm. being able to charge four or 500 bucks a night. Mm -hmm. And that's where it becomes a profitable endeavor. Um, sure. 
later on I wanted to stay down here. They, the E2 visa does not lead to immigrate uh, permanent immigration. So I eventually uh, was sponsored by my uh, broker and um, now I'm uh, on a H1B visa, which allows me to eventually get a green card, um, which we're applying for now. Mm -hmm. But the E2. Now, the can E2, I ask how long have you been down there now for six years and yeah. you got H2, I'm sorry, B2 or whatever it's called after how many years of living there and working? So the E2 you get before you come down. Okay. So the E2, they say you have to basically have a business. So you can either buy a business, you mm -hmm. know, you can buy any kind of business. It doesn't need to be real estate. You can buy a hair salon. You can buy, you know, a lot of people buy property management companies down here because, okay. because you could buy something that's already ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whereas like a restaurant, you have to establish your, yeah. your, uh, you know, yeah. your credibility and everything. Whereas you, you could buy a business here that's already going and just keep it going. Good point. So I'm going to ask you, so what business did you have when you went down to the States to apply so, to the visa? So um, you could purchase real estate. So essentially okay. you okay. purchase, uh, you need to purchase at least the, um, the underlying, you know, what's kind of understood is you need to buy three pieces of real estate at least. Um, you can't just buy one house and say, there, I've got a business because that's okay. really just, you know, uh, for them, that's not enough. Mm -hmm. the, what they're looking for is can you support yourself with the revenues? So mm -hmm. if you've got husband, wife and two kids, you can't say, well, I bought a house and, you know, I'm going to charge two thousand dollars rent. That's that's not sufficient. So they're looking mm -hmm. for a business. So okay. I was able to say, look, I've got multiple properties. Um, and because they're themed, you know, they're making, a, you know, hundred thousand plus of revenue a year each, um, and net they're making at least 50,000 each revenue. So, you know, at $150,000, they're like, okay, you can support your family. And then it needs to have five employees, uh, when you go for renewal. So you don't need to have five employees right away. Okay. But you need to show them, look, I have a business plan where I'm going to start with one cleaning lady in my case and a handyman. And then I'm going to slowly increase that to where, you know, I'm going to have maybe six properties in five years where I'm going to need four cleaning ladies and a handyman. Okay. I have a question now. The question as a Canadian, right? How much are the properties there? So if you have to buy three properties, right? Uh, so how much are those properties where you can make $150,000 a year on? So um, I would say for $150,000 a year is a themed home uh, that is about a, a six bedroom. Mm -hmm. um, and a six bedroom home is about 600000 right now. Okay. So they have to have about a million and a half, $2 million that they have. Well, it's a 600000 well, well, <laughs> financing from the bank. So. Okay, but which, banks, but which, okay, I'm going to ask you these hard questions, okay? And, and I'm not picking on you, Mark. It's just that oh, people say it's easy. Okay, I so get which, this all the time. Yeah, which banks are going to give you like $2 million worth of, okay, two, Great $2 million question. worth of financing? Who's going to do that to a Canadian? So RBC and TD are the two, uh, for lack of a better word, I'll say most popular down here. Okay. RBC is based in North Carolina and they have a call center there. They're, they're virtual. So okay. they didn't like open up branches down here. You won't see an RBC down here, but they, for mortgages, for cross border mortgages, they mm -hmm. have a call center and a whole department with underwriters and everything in North Carolina. And they, okay. they deal with the whole East coast. So you, I've had many clients go to RBC, mm -hmm. very simple. You apply online. Uh, mm -hmm. rbc.com and you go to the you know canadian cross-border mortgages and you apply and then they call you back and they say oh we're going to need proof of income and you know the typical stuff and then a few days later they give you a, a pre-qualification letter and mm -hmm. then uh we're ready to go and then uh the client and i can go shopping okay. uh, TD okay. is, TD is the other. I'm sorry, I'll get back to TD in a moment. Okay. So they say, okay, okay, we're going to pre-qualify you. So what 
what amount do you have to put down? What percentage? Is it 60, 40? Is it 70, 30? What is it normally? 80, 20 or 75, 25. That's, that's really good. I didn't expect that at all. So in fact, a person would have to have maybe a hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand dollars of cash, right? To put down, let's say. So I would say a hundred and twenty-five. I just did the calculation. If you look at six hundred thousand, or yeah, sorry, you're, you're right. Sure. For three properties, you're saying it's three properties, and also it's Canadian funds, right? Are they accepting Canadian funds or we have to change them to American <laughs> funds? Well, you have to change them into American funds. Okay. But okay. on the on the flip side, when you start making money, it's yeah. American money. No, yeah, okay. <laughs> Still, you have to pay. You have to. We have to pay in in America, which is great. You know, I have nothing against it. But I mean, yeah. these are practical things that somebody has to think about. So, how much would they have to come up if if they, if they need to buy three pieces of property at six hundred thousand dollars a piece, and the bank will give it either seventy five or eighty percent? You have to put twenty percent or thirty percent or whatever, right? So, so how much? 20% 20 is 120,000. That's per house. Per house, yeah. Per house. Okay, 120,000 per house. Okay. And then and then the theming if they we can work with them if they establish credit down here so we can get them establishing credit, uh, establishing a an EIN for their company and things of mm -hmm. that sort and we'll work with them over the whole process. I have CPAs down here that can work with them cross border CPAs. And uh, essentially, you open up your your LP. You need to open up an, generally an LP. I don't want to go too much into the weeds, but um, an LLC is not recognized by the CRA okay. um, as being a, a pass-through entity. So Canadians typically don't do an LLC. They'll do an LP, well, an LLC inside of an LP. Okay. So a limited partnership. So essentially, you hold your properties inside of a limited partnership. And mm -hmm. each one of them has its own LLC. Okay. So you would do oh, that for every... Uh, buy three properties. Would you, would you do that separately for each piece of property, have a, a separate LLC? Every CPA has a different opinion on that. Okay. But generally, okay. yes. Um, yeah. You know, to, to avoid... You, you don't want to have them in your personal name and then somebody sues you personally. Yes. Uh, there's always the typical trope of trip and fall. Right, mm -hmm. like somebody trips mm -hmm. falls in your house and they sue you for a million dollars. You know, generally you're going to have insurance for that, but yes. uh, you know you don't want to risk having a personal liability. So what everybody does is they take the mortgage mm -hmm. in their personal name and then they flip, they do a a uh, a quick claim deed to okay. to flip the deed over to their LLC. Or yeah, so, you, so you can't get so in other words like the banks don't like to approve you as a corporation they want to approve you as a person and then right. you can flip it over okay yeah. all right then so how about td bank now can you go into td how it's different from i think you said the royal bank or it's the I same the, thing? the only real difference is that they have branches down here okay so they they can be you know a, a customer service you can actually walk in uh, down here in orlando we have a few branches Mm -hmm. So you can walk in to talk to people. And if you ha open up a bank account, you know, you can, uh, you know, you can actually open up bank accounts down here. You can talk to real people. That's the only benefit. You can also open your mortgage with RBC and you can, you know, do your personal banking with TD. Um, so, but yeah, that's the only advantage to having TD over RBC. But generally for mortgage purposes, they're pretty much the same. Okay, good. So the ratio is about the same then, right? The ratio is about the same. So, okay. So now insurance. I want to tell you something that happened to me here. I've had insurance for my bed and breakfast and cottage rentals because I do short-term rentals um, mm -hmm. in, in the Niagara area, right? Uh, mm -hmm. For 22 years. The company that was doing it is no longer insuring bed and breakfast and cottage rentals. Oh, and I oh, asked oh. them why. And they said, because of all the trouble they've had with Airbnb properties. In fact, last week, I don't know if you heard about this or not, you probably haven't. In fact, last week, there was da damages done to a property that's in, in, in Hamilton, let's say, for $50,000. So this is what's been going on all over the place. And you know, when I started doing short-term rentals, I never 
people, you never heard about people shooting each other in the Airbnbs or, or doing damage, causing damage. That was never the case. But since Airbnb came into on the scene, they there you have different kinds of customers that are coming through. What is it like for insurance in Orlando, Florida? Well, uh, honestly, rates in Florida are a little higher. If you take Florida as a whole, however... Okay. Orlando is probably the cheapest insurance in all of Florida. Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to put a little bit of an asterisk there, but mm -hmm. because of where we are, we are right in the middle of the state. So Florida is a long U-shaped state, mm -hmm. and we are right where my nose is, essentially, yeah. right in the middle. So yeah. what happens is... what. Um, a lot on the news, you might see like Florida rates are horrible and, and, you know, some insurers are not even insuring homes. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, we had a big hurricane on the coast, right? Because hurricanes always hit Miami and Tampa much more than they hit Orlando because we're so yes. far inland. We're 300 kilometers inland. So what happens is when you see on the news, if Orlando's up here, you know, they'll hit like Haiti and stuff like that. They'll mm -hmm. do them completely and then they'll come up to cuba and then they'll come up to miami and then you'll see the the uh the weather reporter like oh my gosh you know we're here in miami and it's horrible it's the category three but then by the time it keeps going up to orlando it turns into a category two category one and then it pretty much dissipates 99 times out of 100 uh they'll dissipate by the time they come to orlando so all that to say it's 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 not as bad in Orlando as it is on the coast or if you have a condo on the beach your insurance is going to be sky high but if you are um you know if you're anywhere inland it's really not so bad so let's say what would be the typical cost of insurance for a, a, a short term rental in Orlando then give us a ballpark what would it be yeah, if it, like ideal in bigger homes because the bigger homes bring the bigger dollars um yeah. But, um, you know, uh, basically a six bedroom home, we're talking about 3000, maybe like it, you know, it, it has a year, a year. A year. Yeah, that's, so not, maybe, that's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, it costs much more over here than that, yeah. <laughs> you know. Okay, but that's that's something someone should should understand, right? And yeah. I would think you have what about $2 million liability or 3 million now? Yeah, one or two. I mean, you know, the, 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 yeah, just depending on the policies. I mean, I don't, I don't usually try to get three or five or $10 million of liability because, you know, honestly, um, you know, having, having dealt with for a few years now, we've never had one thing go wrong. That's uh, good. Or never That's one good. plane. Um, yeah. You know, we had some, some roof damage in the last uh, hurricane that happened. And you know we're talking about like eight thousand. They'll cover eight thousand of fifteen thousand of of roof, oh, I uh, see. you know, replacement. So, okay. you know, I, I I've never been a big proponent of getting five, ten, fifteen million dollars yeah. of coverage. Sure. For, well, here the minimum is two million now, right? And oh, really? most people don't, okay. yeah, most people don't get more than that. You know. Yeah, but your your condos in Toronto cost a million dollars, right? Now we're talking about or 1.3, whereas we're talking about, you know, much smaller prices here. Yeah, yeah, but a condo is not a way to go for short-term rentals anymore. Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, just saying, yeah, yeah. A house in Toronto can cost $3 million. Oh, for, yeah, uh, oh, absolutely. Like, I mean, yeah, but over, but, over here, yeah, we're talking. Uh, you know what, Mark, you must be crazy to think that you're going to buy a $3 million home and, and run it as a short-term rental business and make a profit. There's no right, way you can do course. that, you know. Like, people have to understand that, I, I don't know about you, but over here in Niagara, we have high we have times where you have lots of money and times you have less money because the tourists just aren't coming at certain times of the year. But I think with you, like you find in the summertime, it slows down for you. And it's mostly the winter time you get, you know, you get your houses full of people. You're saying all year round, because I, I don't understand how it could be all year round, quite frankly. Uh, and, and I understand how you wouldn't understand that based on the climate that you're in. <laughs> but yeah. uh, we find that January May and September are are three lower months. Okay. Because okay. kids are going back to school, right? Okay. In September. 
And in May, they're like in their exams and stuff. And, you know, uh, usually vacations will start last week of May and beginning of June. Mm-hmm. And January, you know, it's it's everybody's coming for Christmas. It's our crazy period. And then after that, people are going back home. Um, not many people like pick January 14th for their vacation, for example. Mm-hmm. So those are the lower times. But what we've also noticed is if you theme the homes, and I know I'm beating a, a, a drum. No, that's here. good. No, that's good to know. I think that's important. That's but important. I, I would tell you that I have seen many a non-themed home or a boring home struggle right Mm -hmm. 50 percent occupancy and having to go as low as they can for pricing to get people interested yes because down here you're looking for an experience Mm -hmm. um whereas if you have you know some uh, a pirate themed home or an underwater themed home or even just a couple of bedrooms with princess castles and things like that people will pay whatever you're charging you know you could charge five six hundred dollars a night and people will pay it because mm-hmm. they're looking for that experience on their vacation and the weather is nice here we had like winter for us was the last five days we're okay. just getting out of winter it started it started to be bad on the 24th and it ends pretty much today tomorrow's going to be back up to 80 degrees yeah so uh 80 degrees uh fahrenheit not celsius we're not on the <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's not get mixed up. Well, I know when I used to go down to Florida, it was always in the winter time, January, right? That'd be January, February, March. That's when I would go, right? And I and I right. enjoyed that because of the weather, right? right. But I've kind of gotten Did accustomed. You go with your kids, though? Were you coming on like Disney vacation? Oh, no, I'm a single. I'm a single woman. I don't right. have any children. But with children, of course, I do understand that. So, so. Yeah. Okay, so do you have any photos of your themed places you can share with us right sure. now? There you go. Let's Absolutely. see. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna. Do and how much does it cost? Let's say somebody would like to go ahead with theming their place. How much would it cost to do that, Mark? So it's uh, so we try to encourage people to establish American credit here as quickly as possible, mm-hmm. and if they do that, we actually have financing for the theming. So the okay. theming doesn't need to cost them anything up front if they do, you know, if they do get American credit because okay. by, you know, by the time they've, it usually takes 45 days to close a home. And so, you know, if I meet somebody and they say, I'd like to buy a house, let's start to go shopping. And then we finally mm-hmm. find one, then we close on it. By then, hopefully they've had a few months that they're establishing their credit. And then we can we can uh, put the financing or at least part of it on uh, on credit, so they're able to not have to put anything up front for the theming, and then they can just take it out of their additional profits because it's. Mm-hmm. Making, and how much would it cost? How much would it? It's usually about fifteen thousand per bedroom. Uh, oh, it can go anywhere from fifteen to twenty thousand, but I'll show you why in just a okay, second. Okay, per bedroom. Oh my god. Uh, okay. Okay. So okay. Better. Okay, go ahead. Okay, let me just put it in. Here we go. Okay, here it's coming up. (laughs) Okay, now I'm going to try and make us. Yeah, okay, then. So let's see if I can. So let's say fifteen thousand per bedroom. So what is it that you would pay fifteen thousand for? Like what? So you can see here in the middle. Um, can you see my my mouse here? Just one moment. Um, I don't see your. Oh yes, I see your mouse. Yes, I do. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll build in our shop two huge pirate ships, right? Oh. <laughs> and, and then the kids are asleep. This is a bed. So okay. this one in the middle here, you've got a huge pirate ship. It's a bed on top and a bed in the bottom and a slide and then a bed on top and a bed on the bottom. There's a second pirate ship on the right here. So we're going to build two custom pirate ships for the client. So, yes, absolutely. That, you know, that's where that that price tag comes from. But because of that, um, if you look, this is a pirate ship house that we did for a client of ours. And it's an eight bedroom home. And so we themed the loft. This is what it looks like on the outside. Beautiful home in a resort. Uh, The resort has a clubhouse, a golf course, uh, a huge pool, the lazy river, a tiki bar, arcades, movie theaters, everything you could want. And over here, 
Um, we have the, uh, are you still there? Yes, I am. I'm just taking myself off so they can see you. better, okay? So just go right ahead. Yes, I hear everything. So here in the law, we did, it, we made it look like a, a pirate ship. So I have um, painters that are that have worked for Disney, and they painted all of this whole huge loft area upstairs. And so obviously, we turning it into a pirate ship looks really fantastic. And we do, we did every one of the six bedrooms. So here we did a, a up and down bunk that was an underwater sunken pirate ship. Uh, for adults, we did a skull and bones room here with some beautiful candle lighting, and we made it look like an old uh, pirate tavern. And then over here, we did a mermaid room. So we've got a mermaid, and we've got an etched bed with an etched ship into it. We've got this beautiful wave on the right. So, and then we've got sails, so a beautiful room there. We've got a captain's quarters here for adults as well, um, where we've got these, these beautiful uh, pieces on the side, looks like a, the inside of a pirate hull, and uh, with all these little vases and pieces that we added. And then we've got the pirate ships, and then we have a treasure island room. So, you know, we did all that, and then we also did her arcade, which we don't see here. We put in an arcade in the garage. Um, so the whole project, you know, might come to, you know, hundred or $110,000, but she doesn't have to pay for it because essentially it's, it's uh, put on credit. And then she is now making, I'm happy to report, $190,000 per year. Um, so she makes 190,000 and she's got about with the HOA, the taxes and the mortgage, she has about $60,000 of costs per year. And so she's netting, you know, anywhere between a hundred and $130,000 per year on this property. Fantastic. So, <laughs> and that's including, you know, property management and, uh, that's including all, everything, everything, everything. She's still netting over a hundred thousand dollars a year. That's uh, on essentially a two hundred and you know two hundred thousand dollar and change investment. So you know, um, done. Bravo, bravo. Thank Fantastic. You. So, so you're looking at about a, a thirty five percent return on your investment. So seen that way, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. You know, name name me other things that are more fun to own that are <laughs> that are that are that are going to give you that kind of return. I don't I don't know of many things that will give you a 30. No. And, and when you said, you know what, you know what, Mark, it's interesting. When you said themed, I never realized it would go to that extent. I think that's fabulous. I love it. What a great idea. Now, how many homes are actually doing that outside of your own homes? Are you pretty much the only person that's doing it? And, and like, tell us a little bit about that. So we are among the best, but there are other people that are doing it. What uh, sets us apart is other people on the back of a truck. You know, you'll get people that, uh, you know, amateur carpenters that'll say, oh, I can do this. And the, uh, you know, they'll do it, but they'll do it. They'll bring in their saws into the house and mm -hmm. they'll do it in the house. And then you've got sawdust all over the place. You might put plastic down, but you're still going to get it. We've had clients that, we've come in to clean up afterwards because they said, I got this amateur guy off the back of a truck and he said he could make me some beds for cheaper than you. But now my AC is like a $6,000 repair because he there's sawdust all over the place. Plus I had to do three deep cleanings to get this stuff out and I'm still finding sawdust all over the house. So rather than have that nightmare, we do everything in our shop. Mm -hmm. so we, and the other thing is the amateur guy might take four months to do this project and our team can do it in two because we're making everything in our shop. Yeah, so we, have our, we yeah. have our tools all there. We have our master carpenters and then we do our master carpenters, make the beds, we install the beds and then our painters and muralists and artists do the artwork. Fantastic. So we're, we're in and out in two months, which means you get an extra two months of revenue coming in because we don't have to be in there for four or five months. 
like the amateur guy on the back of the truck. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. You really have a niche. And I'm so glad that you reached out to me that you can share this niche with, with all my viewers that are watching my shows. And I know there's probably going to be a lot of questions. I don't see any questions right now, but it's early in the day. But, uh, you know, they can always ask, uh, ask you questions. So I'm just about ready to wrap it up because I know you have to run. But tell us how, tell everyone how they can get in touch with you, Mark. Um, well, um, they can get in touch with me uh, through my website, hometheme.orlando.com, or they can give me a call at 407 701 9959. I'm always available, and we can talk strategies and, uh, you know, uh, what your budget is and what your goals are. Um, I can help people that want to eventually move down here and kind of share my experience and show them. How they could do that how they can achieve that uh i can also help you uh build your own little empire of themed homes that are cash cows um <laughs> you know i and the other thing that's nice as you alluded to is that i i do we're like a one-stop shop so people um you know can buy the home through me as a realtor um i'm an expert in the investment part i only do investment properties i don't typically do just regular people that just want to buy or sell a home I really work specifically day in and day out with investors uh, and a lot of Canadian investors having been Canadian um, or still am Canadian, um, but having been from Canada, uh, I work with a lot of investors from Montreal, Toronto, et cetera. And um, it's a great place to also spend time with your family, right? So it's a, it, it'll be a great vacation home for years to come that you get to use a few years, uh, a few months of the year. And the rest of the time you're, you're renting it out and making a really good profit off of it. And then we, we do the property management as well. So people don't have to worry about it being cleaned and managed and everything. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have to try to manage cleaning ladies and, and handymen. We do all of that and we book it ridiculously well. Uh, some of our clients are booked 49 weeks out of 52. So fantastic wonderful i'm so glad you came on my show i want to thank you for coming and spending time with us we'll have to have you come back again okay so we okay. can go deeper into it because the first time it's overwhelming but i mean i can really see this is a fantastic business model that somebody may want to do that with you and why not right i mean if you have good returns why not why wouldn't you and also what i like about short-term rentals is that you can the person who has purchased this home can always go down and in Enjoy the themed place themselves, right? And and what wouldn't be better than Orlando, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Just because you're not in the wake of, of where the hurricane is coming. Like I know, and I loved Orlando. It was a beautiful, big city, clean, brand new buildings all over the place. I, I, I love the airport. I was so impressed with that airport. Just beautiful. And, and we actually just added a terminal because we are expecting um more tourism in the coming years because even though we're going into a short recession here yes. um we we increased to, to three terminals now instead of two and we also have a high speed train coming from miami that's uh, about to be completed in the next month or two wow. so you'll be able to go from miami to orlando in about two and a half hours which is amazing you don't have to drive down to miami take four hours anymore and so people that want to do a cruise and come to Disney are going to be able to do a little bit of both now. Fantastic. Well, thank you so very much. I appreciate it. Listen, happy new year to you. Okay. Thank well, you you too. New year and, and enjoy the new year with your two twins. Are they, are they boy, a uh, boy and a girl? A boy and a girl. Yeah. They're in grade five. They're being homeschooled at home. Uh, Excellent. While daddy works and mommy does the schooling. Good for you. I think I, I really am for homeschooling with the way the schools are right now, Mark, and the way things are going, people getting bullied and all of that. There's no need for that, you know. So thank you for being my guest. We'll see you later then, okay? Bye-bye now. I want to thank you all for joining me today. And Mark Younger, he has a great business plan. So if you're thinking of going to the short-term rental business, it may not be worthwhile for you to do it in Canada. 
all right? It may be more worthwhile to do it in a beautiful place, if, especially if you're a Canadian and you want to go down south. This might be a really good opportunity for you. So get in touch with Mark. Get in touch with me if you can't, you know, if, if you want to get in touch with him. I'm happy to help you with that. But anyways, this is Maria Recruit from Real Estate Media News Network. Thank you for joining me again. And please, by all means, like, share, and subscribe. If you like this video, please share with other people. And I will see you later. Take care. Bye-bye. God bless. Bye-bye.